Uh, hello, everyone. This is Mingfei from Intel. Uh, today's topic is standardizing the CPU benchmarking with TorchBench for uh, PyTorch community. Uh, this is actually a piece of work from my colleagues, uh, Wang Chuanqi and Jiang Yanbing. Uh, but unfortunately, they have some visa issues and they can't be here, so I'm doing this presentation for them. Uh, special thanks for uh, the engineer from Meta, Zhao Xu, who helped a really a lot in this piece of work. So firstly, what is the motivation? Uh, TorchBench is a collection of the open source benchmarks uh, that is used to calculate the performance on um, PyTorch uh, projects. Uh, it, it contains several very popular uh, models such as the traditional CN-based uh, image classification models and the transformers and so on. So, but one thing is that uh, it is mostly uh, CUDA oriented, so what we want to do is to increase uh, the CPU benchmarking uh, coverage. So what we do here is to create and maintain a, a standardized CPU benchmarking split in TorchBench, and uh, it can be useful in three ways. So firstly, we can use it to track down performance regressions. Uh, it happens a lot that when we submit a PR uh, for some kind of performance optimization. It brings uh, speed up for certain kind of scenarios, but while on the others, it's not performing that, uh, that well. Or, or even it may bring some regressions. With the help of TorchBench, we can easily narrow down uh, the PRs that, bring, that is bringing in the uh, performance regression. And also, we can use TorchBench to help prove the performance benefit of the new optimizations and also the hardware features. And uh, because TorchBench is a standardized uh, test suite, uh, it is easier to uh, reproduce the uh, me measured performance numbers. Uh, what we have done here in the TorchBench suite is that we uh, provided uh, several, uh, enable several uh, PyTorch features on the CPU side. So firstly, the channel slash support. Uh, channel slash is referred as, sometimes referred as uh, NHWC. Uh, it, it applies to uh, the CNN-based image classi classification models such as the RESNA-50. Uh, usually channel slash is running faster than the channels first. And uh, we also have a project which is called uh, uh, IPAX uh, Intel PyTorch extension in the optimized path, uh, channel slots is chosen as the default uh, memory format. So what we want to do here is to uh, compare the channel slots and channel first the performance from time to time, uh, because on some occasions, channel slots is not uh, so fast. And uh, TorchBench is here to help us to select the special cases. Uh, the second is that we also enabled the quantized models with uh, the front end of uh, Torch uh, FX on int 8. Uh, so the coming work is that to, we are going to enable the new quantized uh, back end. And the final part is that we also enabled the uh, uh, automatic metric, uh, mixed up precision uh, with Torch AMP. Uh, on the CPU side, uh, Torch AMP refers to the FB32 together with BF16. This is because on the current generation of uh, Xeon hardware, we only have uh, matrix multiplication hardware accelerator on uh, int 8 and the BF16, uh, not uh, Flow16. On the next generation, we're going to cover Flow16. So uh, in, the, in the future, the Torch AMP behavior will be apple to apple uh, between CPU and GPU. And uh, another point is, that, uh, another thing that we do is to inc increase the model coverage in TorchBench. In TorchBench. We added several uh, GN workloads in TorchBench, uh, such, as, such as the GCN, GIN, Sage, and uh, Edge CN, et cetera. Uh, one of the biggest opt uh, challenge that we meet in integrating GN models into TorchBench is that uh, some of the GN workloads have really large data set. 
so if you want to run the whole data set, it's going to be take quite a lot of time. And uh, what we do here is, that, and, this, and uh, also it is very, not very uh, reasonable to use some random generated numbers because uh, the sparse patterns in the inputs actually re, uh, is meaningful. It represents the connections between the source and the dust. So what we do here is to select a subset from the uh, entire data set and feed it into TorchBench. Another thing that we do is to enable and fix several of the CPU support in the existing models, such as the CNNs and transformers, so as to make sure that they run uh, freely on the CPU backend. Also, we have to enhance the test framework capability on the CPU backend. Uh, we implement a user benchmark for the CPU. Uh, it, is, it applies to both uh, x86 and the ARM architecture. We added a CPU folder under the uh, CPU user benchmark. And also, uh, if you want to measure the CPU performance, it is very important to set up the correct uh, runtime configurations, such as the number of OPMP threads, uh, the CPU affinity, and also on the latest generations of Xeon, you have to set up the uh, NUMA control. So we have added several APIs to do the runtime regulations on the CPU backend. And also we uh, enable several uh, metrics to measure the performance, such as throughput, latency, And uh, in the future, we are, uh, we are going to continuously improve the model coverage uh, to add new mo more new models, such as the large language models and uh, so on. And uh, in the, we are go also going to integrate new CPU features, such as the uh, inductor, quantizations, and so on. Uh, in this meeting, we have heard quite a lot of uh, new features on the uh, compiler backend, such as the AOT inductor. We're definitely going to add that uh, new technologies into TorchBench for cross-compare purpose. So people may be wondering that uh, I may achieve the same type of target with different tools. Which one is the best? And also, we will continue to enhance the uh, CPU user benchmark and promote it to uh, as a PyTorch regular test. Uh, probably we're going to we are. Uh, negotiating with Meta to uh, enable some of the our IPACs, I mean the PyTorch extension uh, project uh, workloads into TorchBench so that uh, people might uh, measure the performance very easily. 